Please be advised that this video is for the sole purpose of entertainment. Any views of purely my own are subjective and may not necessarily be true. I do, however, do extensive research for all of my videos. All photos have been found on the public domain. I am using them under the Fair Use and Fair Dealing guidelines. I urge everybody to do their own research. Well, hello, it's Murky Meg here. It's Friday the 19th of June. And just a little disclaimer that I've got a little bit of juicy gossip at the very end of this video, so please stick around and listen. It seems there's been some confusion over the Archwell trademarks. Now, the United States Patent and Trademark Office have almost rejected their application for the Archwell trademarks that they put in. Now, the paperwork which was submitted to the USPTO on March the 3rd was said to be too vague. They didn't sign the application and also there is some additional fees that haven't yet been paid. This is really strange to me because there are three elements that have been rejected. Too vague, in what they wanted the trademark to cover, not signed and didn't pay the additional fees. That makes no sense to me. Now, these two have been through this rigmarole before when they tried to do all of this with Sussex Royal. They managed it, they knew the process. Yes, it was in the UK and possibly they didn't do it in the US, but it's a very similar process. Why have they done this? Which is a massive alarm bell to me. Okay, so I get the vagueness of it. You know, they're trying to cover all bases, try and get as much as they can. But the other two, an unsigned document and not pay the fees, it doesn't make sense at all. That is a rookie mistake and quite an unprofessional one. Surely they are actually paying somebody to do this for them. They know exactly that the world is watching that every single move and it would be in their benefit to make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed because any slight error in this application then it would be hitting the media which is exactly what it's done. So then that raises the question and it was brought up by the very talented Harry Markle blog. If you haven't read it please go and read it. They are fabulous. They have implied that because this was such a rookie error that it's possible that they are doing this to buy some time. They have until the 22nd of August to resubmit the forms to pay the fees and to sign the application. After that, it gets null and void. Now, it looks like their PR team tried to preempt this information getting to the media by saying, well, our trial is going to be delayed until 2021. No, that's because you've just mucked up on the paperwork. Or is there a reason for that? Have they very well kind of played the game delayed? Delayed it because of the pandemic that's going around, focusing their attention on COVID and the Black Lives Matter movement and just kind of shelved Archwell, but blamed it on the paperwork. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, the files have been completed and submitted by a company called Cobblestone Lane LLC. They are based in Delaware. We are well aware of Delaware, aren't we? It is like the Cayman Isles tax haven for any corporation it's extremely dodgy and I don't know why that these two have put their trust in Delaware because that in itself screams the fact that they want to try and avoid tax. It's wrong and it's something that shouldn't be done. Like I said earlier in the video, the world is watching them, that every move is going to be scrutinized. They know this. So why then do this particular thing with their paperwork? Why not make sure that it is completely correct on all fronts and use somewhere else other than Delaware? Because to me, it just looks like tax evasion. A legal tax evasion, but only just to be quite honest. Now the files were assessed on the 26th of May and the irregularity notice was submitted addressing the catalogue of errors. Errors to be changed by the 22nd of August, otherwise it will be abandoned altogether. The list of goods are too vague, also additional fees need to be paid and the application was unsigned. Like I've said, that is what the irregularity notice was addressing. And to me, it also implies that this particular element was rushed because there are three things wrong with this document. That's a lot of things. 
Now, any fledgling charity that's getting up and running, they take a lot of research to check the viability and substance of what they want to do. And it seems to me that Harry and Meghan, with their Archwell Global, whatever they're going to call it, they've just simply thrown their hell of a lot towards it and gone, oh, that'll do, it'll cover all bases. It doesn't work like that. The patent office literally says, no, it's far too vague. You need to basically tell us what you are going to be doing because otherwise we will not grant this trademark. But surely Cobblestone Lane LLC should know their stuff if they have, and I'm sure that they have, submitted trademark applications in the past. And this, at the moment, kind of counter predicts what Harry and Meghan are trying to do. They have already said they want to focus their efforts on COVID and Black Lives Matter, and that puts Archwell on the shelf. They are flip-flopping from one bandwagon to the other and they are going to get a name for themselves. You can't chop and change what you desire and what you want to help just by the way the wind blows. Oh, today we're going to focus on this. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Oh, that's a much better idea. That will get us more PR and it will get us into the news even more. Let's go in that direction instead. What you're doing is looking unprofessional and you are looking like ambulance chasers, to be fair. Going after the most popular, most talked about movement or direction and then going, we're going to get on board. Woohoo! Yay! Aren't we fabulous? No, stick with what you want and make that your project. Don't go off in different tangents because you look unprofessional and it's shoddy. The most telling of the notice also said that they wanted to provide a website featuring monetary giving. Well, that's weird, isn't it? What exactly does that mean? You know, we have GoFundMe for that, don't we? It's arbitrary at its finest, really, isn't it? It's so vague that it makes no sense. I can't quite understand what providing a website featuring monetary giving means. That's purely, they want to collect money to be able to give it out to whomever they see fit is their recent trend. That's not how a charity works, I'm afraid. People give to specific charities because they want to help that cause, not to a generalised central money holding fund where other people decide where it goes. That to me is something like comic relief or children in need. They are so global and they are so established. People understand that if they're giving their money to these fundraising charities, then they know that it's going to a good cause because it's been going for so many years and helped so many people. You have to build up the trust with people who are donating by being genuine, by being very, very driven and also very critical of who you are giving to, but also transparent to the people that are giving to you. You can't just say, give us your money and we'll do whatever we want. Doesn't work like that. It seems that the USPTO said it must be clarified as it was indefinite and overboard. That's pretty damning from the Patent and Trademark Office. Now, a source for Harry and Meghan, whoever this might be, I suspect it's probably Scooby Dooby. This is normal back and forth of the trademark process. Well, that very well may be so, but surely as global philanthropists that they want to be, they would make sure that they get the right people who know what they're doing because every move that they make will be reported on. Didn't they go to Stamford and try and get the best minds to try and make sure that their Archwell Global was the best that could possibly be and get the best start? This is not a good start and it looks really shoddy on their part. And I think this is a very delicate ploy to delay Archwell until later on, possibly next year, to make sure that they get the maximum bang from PR that they can do. At the moment, everything is being swallowed with the pandemic and Black Lives Matter. Their little charity would only be a whimper right now. Only their hardened fans would probably really push themselves into it. Everybody else is focused elsewhere. And this is a very clever tactic to delay it. But by also attaching themselves to whatever bandwagon they want to jump onto next, they risk diluting 
marketing their brand. If you have so many fingers in so many pies and you are spinning all these plates, then you will take your eye off the ball. And I don't think that's the right direction for Harry and Meghan. They want to throw themselves into what they have said that they wanted to do. They wanted to start up their charity. But by doing this, it just makes people think, you don't know what you're doing, do you? But they have gone through this process before with the Sussex Royal and they spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on trademarks only for it to be taken away. Surely they knew what was expected. Is it a case of Meghan knowing exactly what she wants, not listening to people, not taking direction easily? You know, we've all heard that what Meghan wants, etc, etc. Is she the one that said, I want to do this, put it in, go? Who knows? I don't think we'll ever, ever know, to be perfectly honest. She's got form and it's been suggested that she was difficult while working on the Vogue issue. The staff simply gave up and let her get on with it. Just sort of held the hands up and went, oh, well, let her do it and be it as it may. So I would love to know your thoughts on this one. Do you think that this is just simple error when filling out the application form or whoever did it for them? Or do you think that this was a deliberate attempt to delay because of what's happening in the world right now and to put their focus on whatever they can to try and get PR and be in the public eye just because they can and they want to? I'm going to end today's video with a little bit of juicy gossip which was following on from my previous video about what happened at the garden party. Now, I have been contacted by somebody who knows somebody who was there. They said that tension started at that garden party, not in the garden while Meghan was saying, it's boring, I want to leave, let's go. But in fact, when Meghan pushed in front of Harry, inside, this is the clip, we've all seen it, and it really upset Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. Then apparently Meghan continued her behaviour of butting in and laughing and giggling inappropriately, putting her tongue out. And then the boredom remark, Camilla snapped, had a quiet word and she was not amused. And that's when they were asked to leave. It's also been told to me that Harry and Meghan apparently had a huge bust up in the car home. We've seen the photos of Meghan looking particularly miserable. So that's even more sense in all of this garden party nonsense that Meghan really doesn't know how to behave in social situations. And quite frankly, if she doesn't, why on earth did she agree to become a working royal family member? It just blows my mind that she was the one that said, I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm ready for this. Yes, let's go. I'm bored. I don't like it. I want to go home. Oh, no, 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 no. Seriously, love, you were paid to do this. It was probably one of the easiest acting roles of your lifetime, but you got greedy, didn't you? So I'd love to know your thoughts on this video with all the trademarking palaver that's gone on and then being rejected. Do you think they're ever going to continue with this or do you think it's tainted so much now that they couldn't possibly get it off the ground? Or do you think they are secretly shelving this to focus on what's prevalent at the moment to gain most traction? Because we know Me Megan likes to be in the media. It's been confirmed several times that she has three PR firms to make sure that she gets her name everywhere around the world. And what do you think of a little bit of juicy gossip at the end about the extra information about the garden party? Do you believe it or do you think it's just a load of nonsense. Would she do that? I would love to know your thoughts as ever. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.